Hello everyone. Joining me in the reading corner today, we have Jodie Lancet Grant. I'm really pleased to be welcoming Jodie back. We talked three years ago on the publication of The Pirate Mums. This is Jodie's third book and I'm looking forward to delving into that and being treated to a reading of the story as well. But I think we've got an opportunity today to talk about the many things that Jodie has done in publishing to promote the presence of LGBTQ publishing for children and young people. So a huge welcome to you, Jodie. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thank you so much for having me back. It's lovely to be chatting. I think I'm going to start with the fact that you you have a new role in publishing. Associate publisher of Bluebird at Pam Macmillan. Tell us a little bit about that role. So I worked in comms for many years since I started in publishing. My first job in publishing was in 2006 at Puffin when you and I first crossed, crossed paths. And I've always worked in comms and I was the communications director at Bluebird for seven or eight years. And actually the LGBTQ plus interest is how I've moved across into being associate publisher but my remit there is much wider than that now. So we had seen this explosion in sales for queer books in the fiction space really driven by book talk and it really showed that there's an appetite for these stories and these voices that maybe the industry hadn't quite realized was there before and we felt there was a business opportunity to be commissioning some non-fiction in the area. The publisher Carol Tonkinson approached me to say look is this something you'd be interested in? None of the other editors have the contacts in this area and the knowledge. Perhaps you do. And I thought, okay, this is interesting. And I started doing it and I absolutely loved it and very quickly signed up three titles to be published in 2025 and then thought, oh, okay, this is a completely new way to use my now 20 years of expertise and knowledge in PR and marketing and in audience and in getting people to actually put their hands in their pocket and buy a book and apply it in a new way. So last summer, Bluebird had a big restructure, our publisher left, and I was moved across out of the comms team into the editorial team in a kind of publisher role, commissioning across our whole list. We'll have two or three books a year in the LGBTQ plus space, but mainly it's personal development, health, food and drink, parenting, lifestyle with a serious, elevated, big ideas edge. And what I'm finding is the books that I'm really attracted to, which does really chime with Legend of the Wild West Twins, are the ones in which those areas that we publish in overlap with feminism. Briefly tell us about the Polari Prize. This came about because I felt when my first book, The Pirate Mums, came out, there were a couple of other titles publishing at the same time, Nen and the Lonely Fisherman, My Daddy's and Grandad's Camper, which went on to win the Waterstones Prize. And it felt like we were at the forefront of this mini, mini explosion of books in this area. But as a publisher, I know how hard it is to get attention for books. And that's the biggest problem we face is discoverability. And I'd long been admiring what Paul Burston had done with the Polari Prize prize with the first book prize and the main prize and so I thought that there was an opportunity here to get some more attention for some children's books in this area. There there is some pushback about children's books especially in the picture book space featuring LGBTQ plus representation and so I really just think the more we can focus on these books as being a good thing the better so I approached Paul and pitched it and he was like well I think it's a great idea if you can secure sponsorship go ahead because the prize is completely voluntary. Nobody gets paid for their time. So for somebody to win something, you have to get a sponsor. The first sponsor was a little box of books. And for this second one, we're doing every other year. And the Ash Literary Agency is sponsoring. And it was a really fantastic experience. I didn't know how many books we would get submitted, but we ended up getting absolutely loads. And reading them was a really, really joyous experience. Seeing all of these different experiences of LGBTQ plus life, whether it was somebody's parents or somebody, a teenager, and seeing these fantastic stories where it wasn't necessarily the center of the story was really wonderful. And yeah, we're back again this year. Fabulous. Look, we can't tease people any longer. We've got to tell them about the legend of the Wild West Twins. Now, I was delighted, Jodie, to watch a little clip of you with your daughter's talking about, mummy, where do you get your ideas from? And you said, from you. So 
Are they the starting point for this one as well? They are in some ways, for sure. I love the bond between my daughters. They're twins. And I really wanted to put that in a book. That was one of the things. People are really interested in twins as well. And I think the way that going through the world with a partner in crime is a really fun thing to explore for a picture book. But the core idea of this book is it's really about feminism. It's about how the world responds to girls when they don't present in a way that society approves of. So one of the twins, Buffalo Jill, is very traditionally girly. She wears roughly dresses, but it's more than that. She's a real people pleaser. She doesn't like to cause a fuss. She's always smiling, even when she doesn't really feel like it. And her sister, Lil, is much more raucous. She's a bit moody. She can be a bit aggressive. And I wanted to explore how society responds to different girls. They're not comparable to my girls but the device of twins to explore that felt like a real gift but also I wanted to put across teamwork I always say to my girls to work together on things and I think this bond that sisters have is a really lovely thing to put in a picture book definitely maybe we should hear a reading of the story next Howdy to Buffalo Lil and her sister, Buffalo Jill, born just minutes apart and the best of buddies. Lil was the hardest riding, loudest shouting, fastest knickerbocker glory guzzling gal in Lone Ridge. Jill had the sweetest smile, sewed the frilliest frocks and baked the tastiest iced buns for miles around. And when she didn't feel like smiling, she kept it to herself. Lone Ridge was famous for hosting the Rip Roaring Rumble, the wildest cowboy contest in the West. This year, Lil was entering for the very first time. I'm going to be just like Yeehaw Jack, she said. He's been Rumble champion forever. Yeehaw Jack could lasso a bull from three towns over. He could do handstands in the saddle. He once stayed put on a bucking bronco for two whole days. He was almost too good to be true. Everyone in Lone Ridge adored Jack, but they were a lot less keen on Lil. As if she could do tricks like him, mocked Wild Wild Walt. She's all big talk. She should leave cowboy into the real cowboys, added Willie the Kid. And would it hurt to smile once in a core popping while, like Jill? asked Big Boots Bobby. Why the Wild West thing? You know what? Some of it was about language. When I was writing the Pirate Mums, I loved being able to tap into this mini dialect. I, I felt there was something similar with the Wild West. I also just thought it was a really evocative setting that you don't see that much in picture books. So I wanted to do something original. And I also really like, in general, in my own reading, genres which have specific tropes and then being able to play with those tropes. And the Wild West is so rich for that. In this book, you've got this town hero, Yeehaw Jack. I've got this page here where he rides into town. I spoke to Katie and I went back and forth quite a lot because I wanted him to be in this unrealistic, all-white cowboy outfit so you've got this town hero who turns out to be not who you thought and then towards the end I had so much fun with the idea of a mysterious stranger cresting the ridge at sundown to save the day so it's really fun to have those tropes to play with but one of my worries about it was that visually it wouldn't be that interesting because it's a desert and so I was just so impressed with how much colour and vibrancy Katie has put into this book and, and how much expression she's put into The expression of the horses is some of my favourite bits. Every page is saturated with colour. It feels really fun. You talked about the language already and this dialect of the Wild Wild West. And it's got 
huge amount of playfulness with it. And again, I'm just coming back to that little clip of you on News Ramp with your daughters, and you seem to be enjoying playing with language. So I'm guessing that that's probably part of family interaction. Oh, my gosh, so much. Delilah, one of my daughters, has invented a game that she's been making us play at mealtime sometimes where one person thinks of a word and then the next person has to have another word but you can only change one letter and you have to go round the table and do it. And we were wondering if some families do games with numbers, but we can't do anything with numbers. Like they're only in year four and I already can't do their maths homework. But when it comes to the words and the language play, we're totally all there. There is a lesson to be learned. Do they learn from each other, these girls? Yeah, I mean, I think Jill is quite inspired to be a bit more like her sister and be a bit braver. And I quite like that because normally, obviously, in a picture book or in any story, the main character is the one that goes on the journey and changes and learns something about themselves. But in this book, Lil doesn't really change. She already knows exactly who she is, and that's fine. And it's more the townsfolk who change. And Jill, but you get hints of it at the beginning. There's a section where Lil, no one in the town likes her, and mostly she doesn't care, but sometimes it does get her down. And she says to her sister, oh, maybe I should be a bit more like you, dainty. And Jill replies, oh, you're brave. Sometimes I wish I could. But then she doesn't get to finish her sentence because Yeehaw Jack rides into town. So I think her sister is her inspiration for bravery. And I think that's really nice. But I also do really like how it's not Lil who changes. She doesn't really learn anything about herself. She already knows. And other people come to see her and accept her for who she is. Jill learns not to be such a people pleaser. Basically, it's not okay to smile when you don't feel... Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. And, you, and it's fine to make a fuss as well. I was talking to Sarah Hagerholt at the FCBG conference a few weeks ago. One of the things that we were talking about was a quote that Elle McNichol put in an online article that says that marginalised groups have the best stories. Just as an idea, I thought that was actually really interesting. And I wondered if you had a perspective on that. That, that is really fascinating, isn't it? can but I think what I really want to do with my books is generally make the story not about the thing that makes the people different and have a kind of wider understanding of what their story and what their adventure could be but I often do think that being from a marginalized section of society can really drive creativity Growing up with a feeling of difference and wanting to express that somehow, I think is really powerful when it comes to writing or creating art. So, yeah, I definitely think there's something in that. You seem very at home in the picture book space. Have you got other writing that is being developed at the moment? Yes. My day job, as you can probably tell, is extremely busy. And I seem to have taken on a lot of things, like with the Polari Prize. But I... I'm in the process of trying to write a YA novel. I don't know if it will ever come to fruition simply because of time, but I've got a great idea that I really love and great characters that feel really fleshed out to me. And I would love to do it. The last time I worked on it was in the summer before I (coughs) remembered when my deadline for this book was. And I've yet to be able to return to it, but I would very much like to. And we're almost coming up to the next summer. And then you've got to revisit where you'd got to and take a bit of time, won't it, just to get back into that space. Tell us a little bit about squeezing writing in amongst being a mum and all the other things that we've talked about. It is just a kind of as and when. So I try and keep Fridays for writing and I I try and do some on the weekends sometimes, but my girls are always around. So it's mainly one day a week I get to write and do book promo. Um, What I do think is I found really helpful actually is moving from communications to editorial. I feel like I'm flexing my writing muscles in a different way through the books that I'm commissioning and editing. And I'm really, really enjoying doing that. I mean, there's lots of writing involved as a communications professional. And I was writing copy lines and strap lines and all things like that all the time. But it's different as an editor. And I'm really enjoying that. But I would love to have more time. I really enjoy my day job. 
I love that I get to be a writer. And I also love to do events and perform. I did a lot of drama when I was younger at university and then just put that away and thought that was done. So it's one of the things I hadn't expected in my journey as being an author, going to school events, going to literary festivals, being on stage and performing these books. I really love it. I don't have time to do do everything, but I try and think what a good thing and how lucky I am to have so many things that I like doing that the only issue is squeezing them all in. What a lovely life. I feel like I just painted a very rose-tinted view of it and I do get a bit stressed and overwhelmed sometimes because there's just a lot going on and I really want to make sure I'm there for my girls and I'm a runner. If I don't get some exercise in, I go a bit crazy. It's this kind of phase of life when my kids are quite young still as well. You've talked about enjoying events so maybe we could just finish as so many of our listeners, our teachers and librarians should they have you come into school? Yes. So I've just got a new author website, so you can look me up. And I'm very keen to come the autumn, do a lot more school events. I really enjoy doing them. I can speak to quite large groups. And what I tend to do is a very interactive reading. So I ask the children, I say that I'm going to need some help. I ask them lots of questions about what they can see. And it's also quite physical. I get them up. I get them doing activities. For this one, there's kind of a version of the, the pirate game, Captain's Calling. I'm going to be teaching them various kind of Wild West moves, like doing the lasso and riding their pony. And the one that does it with the most attitude gets a prize. But they can also find out what their Wild West identity is, what their pony would be called if they were a cowboy or a cowgirl. So they're loads of fun and I really really enjoy doing them that sounds like great fun I'd really love to be at one of those events and the other thing that I've got is I've bought two varnished coconut halves and one mm. of the children will be a volunteer and will be doing horse clip clopping with the coconut so it's quite old school it's not a high-tech event but I think it will be lots of fun very last question another picture book to come next year maybe I think probably not next year now. I've been a little bit too busy, so I think it has probably moved to the year after now. But yeah, I'm due to do another book with OUP and I've got another idea for something in a slightly different style, a bit more lyrical and poetic for a picture book. And then, yes, I'd love to get my head down and write this novel. Fantastic. Thank you so much for joining us in the reading Thank corner you. today and bringing us up to date. It's lovely Thanks talking so to much. you. Thanks so much. Really lovely chatting to you.